Good morning, Heritage Fellowship family and friends. Let's stay connected. Each week during our virtual worship experience, you can interact with us at 7.45 a.m. on YouTube live chat and at 10.45 a.m. during the Facebook watch party. Also, visit our website, heritagereston.org, for previous messages and other important announcements. Heritage, it is time to bless the Lord with our tithes and offerings. We are all aware of the economic strain being felt across the world, and we pray diligently for the families negatively impacted. But thanks be to God, many of us have been blessed to retain our jobs, even see promotion and increase in this time. Luke 12:48 declares that for everyone to whom much is given, much from them will be required. In these unprecedented times, we pray that you will search your hearts and give as the Spirit leads. There are multiple ways to give. On our homepage, click Give in the upper right-hand corner and use the Secure Give app or text to give by sending love lifts and your dollar amount to 703-337-3347. You may also give through automated banking and by mailing your check to the church. We thank you in advance for your gifts of love. We serve a miracle working God. We serve the God of the impossible. And if you know that today, then just take one second and give him glory in this place. You're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe in your power. The God of miracles, signs, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. Lord, we believe in your power. You're the God of
The Bible tells us, behold, I make all things new. And we greet you this morning because God has given us a new year, a new song, a new testimony, a new vision. God has made all things new. And so we enter into this new year filled with God's new grace and his new mercy. I can't think of a better way this Sunday morning to kick off this brand new year. Let's go to God together in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, from the fruit of our lips, for all of your many blessings, for the ways in which you have ushered and navigated us through the turbulence of 2020 and delivered us safely into this brand new year. 
Lord, we thank you for all of your mercy. We thank you for all of your grace. We thank you for this Sunday morning when we gather together in worship. So speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. And we pray, God, that today something happens in somebody's life, Lord, that causes them to draw closer to you, causes them to answer the call that's on their lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Together, meet me in a familiar word from the Lord found in Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. When you have it, you'll find these words. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I want to preach from the topic, stretch. I don't know about you, but like never before, I'm so glad we made it made it through the turbulence of 2020 to launch into 2021. Each year on the first Sunday, we celebrate the new year, but this year, like never before, it's not a cliche. It's, it's a testimony that we are grateful simply to be alive. All of the superficial things that we put time and attention into somehow have faded away as each of us realizes that it was more than just a mask more than just six feet of social distancing, but that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we would have never made it. I don't know how you remember 2020. I don't know what's stuck in your rear view. I don't know the tagline you used to describe the experience. Beloved, even in the struggle, don't get stuck in the loss of 2020. Don't set up your tent in a season where all you remember is social distance and isolation. Don't, don't spend too much time lamenting on the things you no longer have. These things came to pass to equip us and retool us for the reboot to reach forward and press toward the goal in Christ Jesus. Can I help you as I help me this morning? That's the word to jumpstart 2021 the way you need it to, that, that we haven't yet made it, but we celebrate this Sunday morning that God has kept us through the crisis. God has given us the strength to survive. God has enabled us to endure the hardship and not be taken under because there's still a greater goal. There's still a greater prize. There's still a rich reward that we have not yet reached. Hear me, beloved. God has not kept us by chance. God has not spared us because we slipped his mind. God has held on to us even when we didn't know how to hold on to him because there is something more, there's something greater, there's something in this assignment that we've still yet to fulfill. The Apostle Paul preaches through the pen to the church at Philippi with this reminder that you can miss this assignment reminiscing and not focusing on what God has in store next. If you'll let me translate it, Paul tells the church, sometimes in order to move forward, you've got to literally forget what's behind you. This is what the Lord has desired for us in this brand new year, that, that to the one who looks around at their situation and can't see very much change, to the one who's been praying and yet still feels the pinch of the pain, that Paul reaches out in this text to some believers who are going through the test but carry the residue of the trauma and says, it's not wise to look back too long, that where you are isn't where God is going to leave you, but in order for you to discover what he has for you, you got to learn how to press. And I just stopped by this Sunday morning because I know you're tired. I know you've 
borne the pain you, you couldn't even imagine. I, I know when you look around, there are some people that were in the last chapter that God didn't allow to come into the next chapter. But beloved, you got to know, I've got to know that no matter what we lost in 2020, no matter the hell that we had to face, that, that no matter the tears and the fears, we, we had to cry. God did not call an end to our story. He didn't allow the screen to fade to black and allow the credits to roll. They that God has brought us through a difficult season because he has greater in store in the new year. Paul reminds us to be careful not to let a season become the statement on all the things God is doing in our lives. There's got to be movement in 2021. There's got to be some looking forward and not looking backward. There's got to be some reaching beyond what sometimes feels comfortable in order to make it out of the mire, in order to make it out of the valley, in order to make it beyond the centrifugal vortex of what is trying to pull you into a place that God has said, it's not a place that I've ordained. My sister, don't carry 2020 into 2021. My brother, don't repeat the old in this brand new year. Each of us have to take the lessons of what we've learned and not linger in the past, but reach forward to where God is guiding in our present and for our future. I want you to hear this text afresh. Get out your Bible, pull up your app, and highlight these words Paul uses to describe how to move with God from one season to the next. He says, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Paul says, I press. Can I be honest and help you live beyond the pandemic? I, I struggle sometimes with this scripture because how can I forget what I've been through? Brother Drag, it seems like an empty cliche. It seems like some cheap advice from someone who's never been through anything. Monroe, it feels insensitive as if to ignore or even invalidate the experience of my journey. And yet Paul tells me that in order to grow, I've got to make some peace even when my life is in pieces. To set my eyes forward when my feelings try to hold me backward. Because you cannot move forward without first learning how to let go. Ah, you've heard it before, but hear it again. You cannot move forward while still holding on to what's behind you. Come on and work this out with me this Sunday morning. This message from God is to mature us to move forward and not stagnate and die in the places God has designed to be building blocks to bring us closer to him. Beloved, no matter what happened in 2020, God allowed the test so you could appreciate the testimony. You wouldn't truly know God if it had not been for the test. You, you wouldn't know God if, if he hadn't had to show up and be your daily bread. You wouldn't know the tender touch of God if he had not come down uh, to hold you when, you when you felt like letting go. And oftentimes, we take away the wrong message from these experiences by holding on to the trauma and not telling the full truth about the testimony that in everything I've been through, the one thing that has never changed is the strength that I found in God's love. When Paul pins the text and says, I haven't attained it, but yet I can't let go of it. There's one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press. There's so much in the text, but the one word that often gives us the problem is the word that Paul uses that says to forget. Brother Lenny, I don't want to forget because if I forget, Somehow I feel like I've betrayed my own feelings. I, I don't want to forget because to forget cancels the fact that it actually happened. I don't want to forget because if I forget, it means I can't stay in this place self-medicated in my own sorrow. To forget means I've got to do something about what I can't hold on to. I've got to take the next step beyond whatever I'm feeling to be vulnerable yet again in a place that hasn't fully healed. 
Many of us, we get real churchy when it comes to moving forward, but we obfuscate the task, we avoid the assignment, we don't show up for the true work of moving forward because to do so, beloved, oftentimes requires us to do as Paul encourages us, to forget what's behind us. Can I come at it straight? Paul hit a spiritual nerve in my life when he said, there are some things that hinder me from moving forward, some things in my past that I have a distorted memory about, that there are some experiences that were raw and may never be right, and there is a choice to either sit there and let it fester or to make peace with it and move beyond it. And Paul says, if you're going to grow in faith, if you're going to move forward in ministry, you've got to be mature enough to learn how to forget. I'm going to go slow this morning. I don't pretend that that is an easy word, but it's a necessary word to hear as we enter into a new year. That, beloved, there are some things that are now in our past that we've got to learn how to forget. I didn't get it at first. I had to reread the text over and over again, had to study the words, and what I found out is that forgetting isn't about a denial of what happened. Forgetting is about a release from the grip of its control. We often associate the word forget with getting over, when the true definition of the word to forget isn't per se about getting over. More accurately, it's about a release so that I can live beyond the experience. The Greek word forgetting or to forget literally means to loose out of my mind. And hear me, it doesn't deny that it happened, but it looses it so that I can live beyond it, that it's hard to move forward in what God has in store without loosing some things that you've been holding on tightly to. It may be a person, maybe a place, Maybe something that has happened that did not set well in your life, but the work each of us have in order to move forward is to actively loose the very things that stand as an obstacle to our growth. Paul said, beloved, there are some things I literally had to loose that I had to deal with, that I could not die with. There were some things that had me bound so tightly that limited my reach and were a threat to my growth. Can I, can I talk to a few of you that, that can be honest this morning? There are some things not in my past, but in my presence that you know like I know are limiting my reach and are stunting my growth. There's some unforgiveness that's limiting my reach. There's some pain that's stunting my growth. There are some doors God has closed that I can't get over that's limiting my reach. There are some people that I've lost that I can't deal with that are stunting my growth. And for each of us, it may be different, but t Paul tells us to move forward with God. There are some things I've held on to too tightly that I've got to release in order to receive the reward. I struggled with this word, but I had to realize that when Paul says forget, he's not saying ignore what happened, but to make peace with what has happened so that it doesn't hinder you or me. That I've had to make a conscious decision to release it. Why? Because it was never God's will that I hold on to it. The twofold challenge of forgetting isn't just the fear of letting go equally, it's the fear about the uncertainty of what I'm holding on to. Come here and get this. Let me show you the true vulnerability isn't just in the thing that you lose. What truly makes us vulnerable and fragile is the confidence we have in what remains. I, I could let go of the job if I knew there was another. I, I could let go of the bay or the boo if I knew there was better. That any time, beloved, you hold on to a thing and not hold on to Christ as your everything, you set up a situation where a shift in life, a shift in season, a shift in your situation has more power than the one who allowed you to experience something new in the first place. That's what Paul says. It's not enough to make peace and let go of some things in the past. Paul testifies that in this life, 
I didn't only have to learn how to let go, I had to learn how to reach forward, reach, to stretch and persevere, to pursue and lean into, extend beyond my comfort, to stretch beyond my fingertips, to move beyond my square in order to lay hold of what God really had for me. Have you ever noticed what happens when you reach? Everything in your body has to adapt. When you reach, your body literally conforms to the changing direction of what you desire to hold on to. At the moment that you reach, something happens that allows you to access a, a new experience that you've never had before. I don't know what you tag on to 2020, but can I tell you that 2021 is the year of reach. This is the year that I'm not getting stuck. This is the year I'm pressing into deeper. This is the year that I'm searching in God for a new dimension. And God says to you, and God says to me, that I didn't just bring you out of 2020 to leave you stuck standing. I didn't bring you out so that you could stay brokenhearted. I didn't bring you out so you could do this year what you did last year. I brought you out that you might extend into my greatness by learning how to reach. Beloved, you can't reach if you refuse to let go. Can I say it? We're in danger when we stand in opposition to God's assignment and his blessing over our life by allowing our feelings to overshadow our obedience to follow God all the way to his great reward. This New Year's message isn't easy, but it's a part of the assignment, beloved, that we've got to learn how to reach. I'm going to wrap this up. The other day, my friend had a Zoom session on healing, and she asked the question, what hinders your healing? And before I knew it, I was typing in the chat the, the spirit of offense. You ever been so hurt that you didn't heal properly in order to grow? that you poisoned God-given opportunities that should have allowed you to emerge better but left you bitter because offense stood in the way of obedience. This is real talk this morning. You don't have to co-sign. I can testify for myself. There were some moments when I really struggled to move forward. There were some opportunities I could not fully appreciate. There were some times when the pain of offense prevented me from being fully available to God. And the other day when my friend asked the question, I, I really heard the voice of God saying, do you really know what stands in the way of your healing? It isn't in what hurt you, but in what you let harden you. It wasn't in the thing, it was the thing that was within me. When I heard God this time, he, he gave me the power to pray about it properly because the pain wasn't in what had happened to me. The true pain was in what I would not allow him to release from me. You got to release in order to extend your reach, beloved. Don't give the power of your healing over to anyone or anything that's not well able to make a complete change in your life. And, and I'm not just confessing this morning, but I'm asking, what is it on the inside that you won't release so that God can fully pour? What is it that has you backed up and blocked up to the point that there's no room for God to fully restore your life? It may not be offense. Maybe it's a job loss. Perhaps it's been rejection. It might have been death or come as a divorce. Might, might even be masquerading as addiction or depression. Whatever it is in 2021, you got to reach for the reward. Doris, it won't be easy, but you've got to reach like your life depended on it. V, it may not seem possible, but brother, you got to reach. Tony, it may seem like an uphill battle, but reach. And this is what I know. The more you reach, the more you realize that God is moving you out of a place of paralysis, moving you out of a place of pain, moving you out of a place of personal feelings to draw closer to God. From this summer to this winter, there's been a small group of us that's gathered to worship and work out on Sunday mornings. Amen, somebody. You know that 6 a.m., there, there have been some true brothers and some true sisters that realize we put on the COVID-15 who come out from all around the DMV to meet up 
on the track and to work out in worship. I remember the first time going out there, Joyce. It was early. I was tired. All I wanted to do was hit the track and log on to virtual worship. I came in late. The group had already arrived. I needed to catch up, and so I made my way directly to the track. The coach, one of our ministers, stopped me and said, Pastor, your body won't be able to endure the workout if you just get out on the track. I did a few stretches, but I didn't take it too seriously because I'm fit, I'm 40, and, and I can make it around the track. Well, I was fine till I got home. I ate, I worshiped, I laid down to take my 40-year-old nap. But when I woke up, I couldn't move because every bone in my body felt like it was under attack. Upset, I called the coach, asked what happened, why couldn't I move? There, there was a blow to my body and I could not describe. And Walter, this is what he said. He said, the most important part of the workout is determined by how well you've learned how to stretch. You ain't caught it yet. You, you're gonna hurt yourself just jumping out there on the track, uh, that you're unfit for this workout, if you won't be able to endure and, and stay the race, if you fail to understand that the importance of the workout is first found in the stretch. What's the stretch? Father, I stretch my hands to thee. What's the stretch? Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching for those things which are before me. What's the stretch? Jesus speaking to the man with a withered hand and saying simply to stretch. God says to Moses, stretch, and suddenly the seas parted. And even Christ on the cross, he had to what? He had to stretch. He had to stretch beyond the pain of the moment to enter into the joy of eternity. Why? Because if you're going to make it in this life, you got to learn how to stretch. Hear me, that your ability to survive on the track is dependent on what you do in the stretch. And I just stopped by this Sunday morning as we enter this lap on the track of this year called 2021 to tell somebody that in order to make it to the goal this year, you can't stay where you've been. You've got to stretch. The only way to make it is to hyper extend your reach. And I would that you'd allow me to play track coach this Sunday morning. Can I help you reach your goal? Can I share with you uh, that if you desire to make it in 2021, baby, you got to stretch outside of yourself and into God. Whether you're on the starting blocks, for each of us, it's a brand new year. One that the Lord has allowed. And the question as you sit is, are you committed to the stretch? It's in that place that I want to leave you this Sunday morning. It's in that place that I want to pray with you this Sunday morning. It's in that place I want to grow with you this Sunday morning. Because we can't do anything about those things that are behind. But I promise you, beloved, that if you will just reach forth and stretch. God is well able to carry you out of what you've been through into the places he has prepared for you. Come on, beloved, let's pray. God, this Sunday morning, you know like nobody else that what I need is to stretch, to be delivered, God, from the things that I've been holding on to too tightly, that I might reach into a new dimension of relationship with you. This Sunday morning, God, the residue of 2020 is enough to give us a bleak outlook on 2021. But God, despite what we've been through, this morning I'm encouraged that you're well able, just as you've shown up every day on this journey, to carry me through the very things I don't know that I can get through. Perhaps this Sunday morning, that's the honest admission that allows someone to give their life to you. Perhaps, God, this Sunday morning, that's the reconnection that's going to pull somebody out of a deep and a dark place. Perhaps this Sunday morning, that's the word I needed to hear to help me get this new year off on the right foot. So God, wherever we are, don't leave us where we are, 
because we're reaching out to you that you might take us to the places that we can only go in you. So this Sunday morning, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the promise. We thank you for the protection. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The word from heaven this Sunday morning is are you ready to stretch? As you hear that word, you now have to do something with that word. Might I suggest to you the first and best step in this brand new year is to connect your life to Christ. Whether you've never had relationship with him, whether the relationship has kind of complicated, no matter where you find yourself, reach out to us at lovelifts at heritagereston.org. Put in the subject line, ready to stretch. And it would be our joy to walk this journey with you. Beloved, until next time, may the peace of God cover you. May the joy of God anchor you. May the love of God excite you to move out of where you've been in order that you might stretch. We love you with the love of the Lord. We look forward to next Sunday when we gather together again. God be with you this week is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We know that coming together virtually has its challenges. We know that it's been a little bit difficult uh, as we come to the table. On this first Sunday of the month, we still believe that even virtually, we connect back to God and connect with one another when we come to celebrate one of the two ordinances of our faith, the first being believer's baptism and this Holy Communion. By nature, the name communion brings us together in relationship with each other as we seek relationship with God. And so even now this morning, we pray that as you prepare at your table, as you get your elements ready to remember the depth of Christ's love for us in the breaking of bread, in the lifting of cup, that you'll remember that he loved each of us to the point that he was willing to offer his very, his very body that we might have eternal life. So why don't you come join us together as one family in Christ. Let's prepare even now to take communion. Let us pray. God, we just say thanks. Thank you for loving us enough that you were willing to give everything for us. You gave us your son and he gave us his life that we would not be lost in darkness, but that we would be reconciled in relationship. Lord, that reconciliation means that there's no sin that can't be forgiven. There's nothing that can separate us because your love has brought us together and all you ask is that we accept your love. So this morning, God, as we accept your love, as we thank Jesus for loving us enough to die on a cross for our sins. We pray, God, that that love would so fill our hearts that we would love others, that we would forgive others, that we would look like the reflection of you. So help us, we pray, to be examples of your great love. It's in Jesus' name that we thank you, God. Amen. 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 Won't you share in the Apostles' Creed with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. For I have received of the Lord what I also handed to, unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. And when 
he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But, but when, when we, we are, are judged, judged by the Lord, Lord we, we are disciplined so that, that we may not be condemned along with the world. world. Let us pray this prayer of blessing together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. This morning, why don't you just, whatever the Lord has blessed you with to have by way of bread, won't you take it even now? As we remember that this bread represents the body of Christ, which was broken for us on an old rugged cross for your sins and mine. Even in your own home, won't you take this bread which has been broken for us? Won't you lift it with me? Let's give God thanks. This represents the body of our Lord, broken for you and for me. Take and eat all of it. This cup that we lift represents his blood, which came streaming down that cross as a testimony of his love for you and for me. Songwriter said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Take, let's drink this together. We close this in prayer this morning. Yes. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for your life. We thank you, God, for your light. And we thank you, God, for allowing us to exist in a world not alone, but with you. Thank you, God, for hovering over the waters and keeping us safe, Lord Jesus, keeping our homes safe, keeping our minds safe, Lord. We thank you, God, even now that you will sustain us, Lord Jesus, through the end of this year into the beginning of next year. We pray for peace and joy and laughter. We pray for provision and promise for all homes, for all jobs, for all people that are in the hospitals. We thank you, God, for just being a part of our church family and healing us right where we are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Every time you take communion, you reconnect with the love of God through Christ Jesus that enters into your heart and into ours. Let that same love leave you even now. Connect with another heart that they too may know the love of a Savior who loved each of us enough to die on the cross, that none of us would be disconnected and lost, but together reconciled in the family of God. God bless you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
Thank you for worshiping with us and please stay connected. Join us for the Hour of Power on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and daily for morning prayer. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Have a blessed week.